Hi everyone, this is CLC, also known as Symphony, the owner and creator of the site symphony.com. I'll link you down below. I'm coming to you with a series of videos that I wish had been around when I was looking to create custom content for The Sims 4. I wanted to make videos for anyone who was interested in creating clothing, meshes, and recolors for the game, but they didn't know where to start. I remember being completely overwhelmed by the multitude of videos, tutorials on websites, and just wishing that there was a static line where I could learn from beginning to middle to end. I decided I would help anyone out who was looking to create custom clothing for the game and just needed a little direction on how to get started. I want to add a disclaimer that this is not a tutorial series. I don't believe that anyone can really give you a tutorial on how to create for the game. I think that there are certain steps that you need to take in order to get your content into the game, and that's one thing. But as far as creation goes, it comes down to what you would like to see in your game. And that's definitely something that I want to stress. Please make sure that anything that you decide to create is something you're passionate about or you're going to get frustrated very easily, you're going to feel overwhelmed, and you're not going to feel that pride that courses through your veins and seeing your creation in game. While it's wonderful to want to create to make other people happy, you should definitely make sure that anything that you create makes you happy first and foremost. I'm not sure exactly how many videos there will be, but I would like to make a video for Sims 4 Studio, Photoshop, Marvelous Designer, and Blender, at the very least. Once again, I just want to stress that this is not a tutorial. Please do not feel like you need to follow every step that I'm doing to a T in order to create for yourself. These are just the steps that I've taken to make my own custom content, and I definitely encourage you to march to the beat of your own drum. If you have any questions, if there are any suggestions, comments, tips, tricks, techniques, I'm always here. You can either comment down below in the notes or you can private message me here on YouTube if you're more comfortable doing it that way. Or you can go to my site, go to fact, answers, and questions, go to contact me and send me an email at symphonycc at AOL.com. All right, so let's get started with the video. Hello everyone and welcome to video number four. We are starting where we left off, but there is actually one last thing that I forgot to show you in Marvelous Designer. So we are going to just go a step back and I'll show you now it's very quick and it's very easy. So we have our tube top here that we made for our Sim Girls. What I forgot to show you is we need to quadrangulate this tube top, okay? So right now, this is a segment of little triangles. We need to make them a segment of squares, okay? So I'm going to click Control A to select all of the tube top. We are going to right click and we're going to hit the quadrangulate button. Right now, it's triangulated. That's the way it's formatted. And it's just a series of teeny tiny little triangles that are making up the tube top. We want it to be a series of squares because that's the way that The Sims 4, that's the way that their meshes work. And it's so much easier to manipulate the mesh when it's quadrangulated. So we're just going to hit quadrangulate. And you're not going to immediately see anything different. Just shift it a little bit. But it's more so for Blender. So we're also going to simulate it again, just so that, you know, it falls perfectly, falls the way we want it to. We'll make any adjustments like this right here is kind of poking into the body. So we just want to be sure that that's not happening. Okay. And then we are going to hit our simulation button one more time to stop the simulation. We're going to go to avatar, delete all avatars, and then we're going to go to file export object and we are going to once again name it little girls ruffle top tube top mesh i'm just copying over the version that i made for video number three i'm gonna hit save it's gonna ask me if i want to replace it yes and then this export object window comes up we're saving everything the way that it was before and we're gonna click okay okay i'm also gonna click file 
and save project just so that it saves over the old version of our project. Instead of the triangulated version being saved, we now have a quadrangulated version that is saved. We are now in Blender and I am in user ortho mode. The way that I got there was by going to view and in view perspective ortho. I feel that perspective because there's perspective mode there's ortho mode perspective kind of distorts it it gives it like a fun house kind of a vibe to me where it's like sometimes when you spin it it's like really close sometimes when you spin it it's too far ortho keeps it modulated it keeps it like regulated to me so um we're going to go to file import wavefront object and we're pulling our object mesh okay we don't need the material or anything like that. We just need that object mesh. And it's going to be the one with the highest uh, count over here. And we're going to go to import object. And we have our tube top. Okay. We're going to pull our Sims top. And it's weird. It looks lopsided when it's not on the Sim. And it looks like it's um, fine when it's on the Sim. Okay, so we're just going to leave that be for now. And what we're going to do is go back to object and we're going to click A because that's going to take the highlight off. If you click A, this highlight on, highlight off, we just don't want to select anything right now per se. What we want to do is we want to close off the bottom of this tube top. We're going to hide the body for right now. And I know that sounds very ominous, but... Um, we want to close off the bottom of this tube top. What I'm going to do is come down here. Right now, we are on vertice select. The vertices are these little dots, okay? So that's a vertice. The lines are what's between the dots. The faces are these rectangles, okay? So we want to go down to line because that's what we're looking to choose. We're looking to choose these lines. Holding down Shift and Alt, we're going to click on one of these lines down here. We're going to right click on one of these lines and it's going to choose the whole back half. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing. Holding down Shift and Alt, we're going to choose one of the lines in front. So now we have the whole bottom half, all the lines in the bottom half selected. Okay. Then going to press the E key on our keyboard and do not move the mouse wherever your mouse is. Just left click there until you see your navigation button again. OK, we are then going to take S. We're going to click our S key and we are going to scale because what we did is we created a copy. We created a, an extension of the bottom half that we selected to come out. And now we're scaling it toward the body. So S will allow you to pull it toward the body. Okay. I don't want to pull it too far. I want there to be a little bit of a cliff. Just a little bit. We're going to click E again to do the same exact thing. And we're going to click S to scale. And now we're going to move it up. So now it looks like there's a little bit of a cliff. And then it's moving up. Okay. At this point, we're going to click B again, and I'm just going to left click wherever the mouse is so I can see this little navigational tool again. And then I'm going to click Alt and M. It's going to be the merge action. We're going to merge it at center, and it's going to close it off completely. I could have just clicked E, and I could have just did that merge function right away, but I like to have an edge. I like to move it away from the Sims body so that it doesn't just look like this chopped off kind of a thing. I, I do want there to be a little bit of an edge and I'm going to show you what I mean. So let's bring the body back. And if you take a look now, it looks like it's pulling up a little bit. That's what I like. I like that realism of it pulling up a little bit. I don't like it to just be like just chopped off. I do like the realism of it moving up a little bit. Okay, so we need to get rid of this dark edge. This edge, it's, it's very annoying. We're going to go back to edit mode. We are going to hold down shift and alt and we're going to choose the very like the same edges that we chose. We're going to make sure that we're choosing 
the very, very edges, okay? And go around and make sure all of it is chosen because sometimes whenever we do that E function, it doesn't choose everything. Then we're going to hit our space bar and we are going to type in edge split and hit the enter key. You notice all the shadows have gone. If we go back to object, our shadows have disappeared, okay? I don't know the technical term of why that happens. I am just so grateful that I know how to get rid of it. I had to go to the Blender website uh, forums and people there were amazing. A lot of these technical forums, I'm telling you, they are there to absolutely help you to not go through the hell that they did to try to figure out why. Because I could not for the life of me. I kept on scrapping my creations thinking that I'm the reason why, you know, these, these edges, these dark ends are coming out and it was just a simple fix so i definitely recommend that if you have any issues with blender you go over to blender.org and go to their forum people will be more than happy to help you we are now going to go to file we're going to save as and i always save as the version of whatever i saved it from sims 4 studio so child female ruffle hemmed tube top i'm saving it as version 3 I always save different numbers because that way, if I make a mistake and I say, you know what, let me go back to version two. Let's see, I'm on version eight. And I'm like, I think I'm going to start again from version two. I have the option to start again. It's like the layers in Photoshop. If you want to delete something, you have the option to delete it rather than having to start completely from the very beginning. We now have the bottom of our tube top sealed off. And if you look, you know, it's sealed off inside the inner cavity of the body. We're going to do the same to the top. Even though the top has the elastic from Marvelous Designer, I still kind of feel like you can see down the back a little bit. Yeah, you can see down the back a little bit. So let's seal that off as well. We're going to hide the body one more time. I'm going to show you how to split your screen in two. So you see this little triangle over here in your corner? It's like it's, it's broken up into a couple of different lines. Holding down your left mouse key, you're going to click on that triangle and you're going to pull it out to the left okay so now we have two different windows i'm holding down my shift key and holding down my middle mouse wheel to center this again and we're going to change what this is so these have two totally different sets of controls okay they're double windows we're going to come over here to this cube and we're going to go to uv image editor okay you don't see anything there yet because this isn't selected. In this window, we're going to click the A key, and now we have it selected. We're going to be changing this because it has to look presentable in the game, and this is what it looked like in Marvelous Designer. What I brought this up for is because I want to hide this ruffle right now so I can get the top edge of this tube top. And the way I'm going to do that is in this window, and you have to make sure you're in the right window. I'm going to click my B button on my keyboard, and I'm going to just make a box around the ruffles. And I'm going to click the H key, and it hides the ruffles over here. But it's still here. It's, it's hidden over here, but it's still here. I am then going to come over to this window. I'm going to click Control-I for inverse, and I'm going to now hide it from here. So what I'm gonna do now is what I was doing before. I'm just gonna take my left mouse button and hold it down and move it over so I can see a little bit better. I am going to click Shift and Alt, hold down one of the edges. Okay, so that's not working. I'm thinking it was working before. So I'm going to zoom in over here because I can't seem to get the edge over here. Um, the ruffles really are the things that have the edge. I mean, I can do it on the ruffles. <sighs> I'm thinking if I should do it on the ruffles or not. 
yeah i've decided that i'm going to close up the bottom on the ruffle so pressing alt and h i'm going to bring back the ruffle press control and i to inverse and, and select the tube top then i'm going to press the h button to hide the tube top okay we're going to since the tube top ruffle is the one with the perfect edge we're going to select that so we're going to hold down shift and alt and we're going to select that and we're going to select this we're going to make sure everything is selected and we're going to do exactly what we did before which is press the e key and then press the s key in order to scale and i think i'm just going to scale it completely Okay, I may use this to just kind of bring it down a little bit. But that should work. And then I'm going to press E again. And then Alt and M to close it off. And we have to do the same thing with the edge split. Because if we don't, there's going to be this weird dark shadow just want to be sure that i'm selecting everything that i'm supposed to and it can be hard whenever you're working with as you can see like i i'm glad that i'm doing this real time with you and you can see like the frustrations that i mean even at this level i've been doing this for a couple of years and you know i, I didn't know whether or not to close off the top of the tube top or whether to close off the ruffles and i chose the ruffles so we're going to just go back to space bar edge split is already selected we're just going to click enter okay and now we're going to make sure we're in the right window we're going to click alt h bring back our tube top and make sure that everything links up well Let's go to edit mode just to be sure. Everything looks okay. This looks a little bit off up here, but it's not going to matter too much. The ruffles will hide that. So let's bring the body. And now we can't see down past. So everything is closed off the way we want it to be. Okay, so we're going to click File, Save As. We're going to save it as version 4. As I said, you want to save as many versions as possible. I have some files where I've saved up to version 40. So don't feel weird if you save a lot of versions. Better safe than sorry. What we're going to do now is we're going to put our mesh onto our sims body in a way that we can recolor it nicely in photoshop what i mean by that is i want to go to object mode and go to edit mode i want to press the a button to bring everything up i can't have it looking like this okay the way that we find we find out where we want to put our pieces is by going over here to this looks like a, a picture of like a sunset or something like that we're going to left click on it and we're going to choose base texture which is the top one it's a peach tone because it's for the skin okay i'm going to use my left mouse button to just move that to the side i'm going to zoom in a little bit and usually this needs to be stretched out. It's a little too compact. So I'm going to choose A in this window. I'm going to choose S and X because we need to pull it out on the X axis. Okay. It's a little too compressed. And then we're going to left mouse click in order to release. Then we're going to choose S again, but just S, not S and X. We're going to choose S and we're going to grab it. And now I have to decide how far down I can possibly take this. I'm choosing G to grab. Now, it's a little too big because it's going to show on the body down here. So I have to scale it down again. So I'm pressing S and I'm scaling it down because I have to figure out how far down it can go. Now, a really good estimation of how far down it can go 
I was actually thinking of putting it here between the arms. You have to make sure that it doesn't show on the Sims body. Okay. So what I usually do is go back to object mode. I choose the body. I'm just uh, right clicking on the body. And I go to edit mode to see, well, how far down does this go? Okay. And I'm just going to press A in this window. And I'm just going to take the B key and I'm going to determine, okay, so it goes down around here. So now I'm going to go back to object mode. I'm going to choose my tube top with my right mouse button. And I'm going to go to edit mode again. And let's see where, okay. So we have until around here before it shows. So that's great. I actually thought I would be up, I would be too far. So we can now choose G. And we can move it down a little bit so that it doesn't show too much, okay? We're then going to choose A to unselect everything. I'm going to choose B. And I'm going to take my arrow key and actually I'm going to take G. I'm going to press G first. And I'm going to take my arrow key. And I'm moving it to the right. I like to use the arrow key because if I just use the mouse, it's going to move up and down. And I don't want that. I want them to be even just the same way that they were in Marvelous Designer. So that should work. I'm a little afraid that it's going to show on the back. I do have a little bit more space to move it down. Maybe I should. I'm going to keep it where it is. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep it where it is. So I'm going to select A to unselect everything. I'm going to select B. I'm going to select these ruffles. I'm going to click R for rotate, and I'm going to click on the number pad, the number 90. And it's going to rotate at 90 degrees. I'm going to press Enter. Okay. Then I'm going to press S to scale it down. And I'm going to... Press B to grab it. I think I'm going to just actually raise this B to grab it. And then press S to scale it again. Kind of want them to be a little bit big. Just a little bit, not too much. Just S to, and you press S and you either move your mouse up or down. You don't need to press a button. When you press S, you're just moving your mouse. This is me moving it toward my body. This is me moving it toward the screen. You don't need to, you know, do anything until you're ready to commit it to where you want it to be. Then you click your left mouse button. I know this sounds confusing, but if you play around with it, you'll see what I'm saying. So I'm going to select A to unselect everything. And I'm going to select B to grab that one section. I'm going to select G to move this over. And I'm going to hit enter to commit it. I'm going to select B, then G to move it a little bit. Because we need to be sure it doesn't show up on the fingernails or the, the fingers or the hands. So it's in between. This section right here is in between. It's usually where the bottom of the sleeve is. But being that we don't have that, it's not a shirt. It's not a shirt. It's a tube top. We don't have to worry about that so much. I am worried about this. So I'm going to shrink it down. So I'm going to press S and Y just to shrink it down a little bit. I'm going to press G to grab it a little bit. Pull it down. So that that way it definitely doesn't show. I mean, I think I think it's uh, far up enough. We can check. We can do the same test that we did before. Where we can select this. And we can now move our arrow up here. And then we can go back to object. And select the tube top. Go back to edit mode. And just make sure, okay, so it's all the way up here. We're good. We're, we're really good. We're fine. We shouldn't have a problem. So if you want, you can go back with B and scale it back to Y. Make it as tall as it was before so that you don't lose any distortion. But we're fine. We should be just fine. This is the way it's going to look in Photoshop. This is the way it's going to look. This is really simple. Um, you can sometimes use 
the area down here. Sometimes you can use the area over here. Um, it's easier when it's something that covers the body because you have so many different options, especially if it covers the arms or the hands. Oh, you have so many different options. You don't want to put it up here. It's going to cover the face. You don't want to put it over here. It's usually where the shoes are. You don't want to put it down here. It's going to cover the feet. So you need to just be really careful if it's something like this. You need to be careful that you're you know, not going to be coloring something in a place that can be seen. So we're going to go to file, save as, we're going to save version number five. Okay, so we are a good way there. We've closed off our top and our bottom. We have um, set it up so that it can be recolored in Photoshop. And now we're going to set it up so that we can just easily recolor it in Photoshop. We're going to come down here to image and we're going to go to new image. It's the very bottom option. And we're going to left click. In this height section, we're going to left click. We're going to type in 2048. And then we're going to hit OK. And it's going to turn black. We're going to come over here to, let me see what this is called. It's just our camera. It's, it says render, I guess. It's the camera section. We're going to scroll down and we're going to go down to the section that says bake. Make sure that you are in Blender Render. I mean, you automatically go into Blender Render, but just make sure that you're there. So once you hit bake, okay, it's going to open up this whole new set of options. We're going to change bake mode to ambient occlusion. And we're going to change the margin okay this section right here to four and hit enter that's all you do ambient occlusion and four then you're going to hit this bake button okay and for you to see what it looks like i'm going to go to object mode so this is what we're going to be recoloring in photoshop okay it looks a little wonky right now we fix all of this in the next video but at least we know exactly where our mesh is and we have something that we can recolor. It even gives us some shade, some shadows, some definition. That's exactly what we want. We are going to come down here to image again. We're going to go save as image and it automatically saves as untitled. I always just leave it that way. If you want to save it as something else, that's fine. But I just save it as untitled and I click save as image. Okay. We're going to save again as tube top version number six. So now we have our file that is ready for Photoshop. Okay, this is going to be our DDS. Once we program it, once we copy this picture, we're going to save it as our DDS. Okay, so the very next thing that we want to do is we want to go to the newest version of Blender in order to program this tube top to work with weight gain and weight loss. So I'm going to now close out this version of Blender and bring up the newer version of Blender. Okay, so this is not the newest version of Blender, okay? This is an older version of Blender, but it is newer than the old version that comes with Sims 4 Studio. This is Blender 2.79B, okay? I like this version because the newer version Everything's kind of changed and I'm not ready for that kind of change just yet, but I like this version. If you want, I'm pretty sure that if you go to Blender's website, you can download this older version. Um, if you go to Google, you could probably download, you know, you could probably type in Blender 2.79B, download Blender 2.79B. You don't need to download this through Sims 4 Studio. This is something you can download at the blender.org website. I would go to Google, I would type in download Blender 2.79B and it should pop up and you should be able to download this version. If you wanna download the latest version, you can. I believe you can still go over to the section I'm about to show you, because you only need this for one step. You only need this version for one step. You should be able to, but I don't know if it's in the same place, I warn you. I don't know if it's in the very same place. I'm still using this version because I'm comfortable with it. So I'm going to click out of this, just I clicked with my left mouse key, 
and I'm going to go to File, Open. I'm going to navigate to my Tube Top folder. Okay, this is exactly where it left off in the older version of Blender. And like I said, we just need this for one step. Okay, we're going to come over to this section. It's a triangle and it has three points and three lines. We're going to come down here to where it says UV map and it's already going to be selected. It's going to be in blue. We're going to use our left mouse button to double click and it's going to highlight it in black. We're going to type in lowercase letters, the letters U, V, then underscore, then zero. And we're going to hit enter. I'm going to pull this window down. We're going to click the plus sign here because we want to add another one. Once again, left mouse button, double click. It's going to turn black. We're going to type in U, V, underscore, sorry, I clicked out, U, V, underscore, one. Okay, so we have a U, V, underscore, zero, and a U, V, underscore, one. Shouldn't say U, V, map here anywhere. What that is, is U, V, underscore, zero is, and I'll show you on the body. UV underscore zero, and let me see, I'll go to edit mode just to show you. This is the way it looks in Photoshop. This is the way it's supposed to look. Remember that peach body that we had on the old version of Blender? This is how it looks. This is the, the body that we're selecting, not the tube top, okay? When we click on UV underscore one, it becomes this distorted thing, and it distorts so that the Sims body can become fatter or slimmer. OK, so we need that to happen to the tube top right now. If we go back to object mode and select the tube top and we take a look at underscore one version, it looks exa exactly the same as zero and one. So we need to program this to do that. And in order to do that, it's one simple little step. OK, so we are now going to go over to the next section next to it. It's to the left. It's the wrench. We're going to go to add modifier. We're going to go to data transfer. OK, I want to go back to object mode because it doesn't happen if it's in edit mode. So now we come up with this box. OK, let me just pull this out for you a little so you can see. We're going to select this third object that says face corner data and we're going to left click and it's going to come up with the check mark. We need to select the mesh that we're pulling from, which is the body. OK, what are we basing this tube top on? Okay, so the body mesh is Sims 4 Studio Mesh 1, and it's going to be here. That's what we're putting in here, and that's left mouse clicking. We're then going to come down here, and we're going to click, left mouse click on UVs. We're going to click on all layers, and it's going to say, well, which one do we want to apply this to? We want to apply it to UV underscore 1, left click. Same thing over here in by name, UV underscore 1. Then we just click apply. Now, if you go to back to this little triangle version, what is this called? Object data. And this is called the modifier, the object modifier. So if we go back to object data and you click on zero, this is the way it looks in Photoshop. We have now programmed it to morph with the body. And it's going to look crazy. It's going to look really, really weird. But it's now programmed to morph with the body. So this can now get bigger or smaller depending on the weight of your sim. We're going to click on file. We're going to click on save as. We're saving this as version 7 because we are almost done. We are back in Blender version 2.70a. Okay, so this is the version that we are now going to complete everything in. We just needed the newer version for that one little step. And I know it's annoying, but it is necessary. So we're going to right click out of this. We're going to go back and we're going to find the mesh that we just altered in the newer version of Blender and we're going to open it and it left off exactly where, you know, it did in, in the newer version. So we're going to come back to UV zero. We have one more step to do. Okay, so this next step is going to be <laughs> 
a little weird because I have discovered that, and I'm just, the way that I'm going to turn this back to one window is I'm going to, on this little triangle over here in this window, I'm going to hold down my left mouse key and just pull it toward the right. Okay, so we now have our main window again. So I want to program this tube top to move with the body. It's not programmed to grow or shrink with the body. I want to program it to move with the body. And in order to do that, I need to do what is called weight mapping. It is simple in and of itself. And with a tube top like this, it's not going to be a problem. But these arms are going to be a pain in the butt. OK, so what I'm going to do is I am going to take the arms off. OK, and I actually shouldn't have closed this window. So let's pull it back out again because um, I'm going to go to object. I'm going to select the body. I'm going to go back over here to UV image editor. Go back over here and select UV one. And I'm just going to select. Well, you can do this another way. You can hold on your shift key and hold on the L key. And then same thing with this. And just press H for hide. Come over to this window and press Control I for inverse. And then I'm just going to delete. Okay, so let me see if I can find the proper way to explain why I just did this. The ruffles are going to be pulling from the arms because they're too close to the arms and it is going to be a pain in the butt in order to delete that and alter that. It's Every time the sim lifts their arm, the ruffles are going to come all the way up and it's going to look really weird like it's crazy glued to their arms. It's supposed to stay here. I want it to be programmed to the body. So I'm just going to delete the arms for now. Trust me, I'm not going to delete them and put them in game. Um, I'm just deleting them for now. So what we need to do is we have the body, we have the tube top. I need to select the body with my right mouse button and then holding down shift, select the tube top. You're going to see there's two different colors. This is a dark orange. This is more like a yellow orange. Okay, so the dark orange is the first thing you select. This is what we're pulling from the yellow is what is going to have the information planted onto it. We're going to come over here to our object mode screen or our object mode panel. We're going to click weight paint. It's the second option and it's going to turn as blue. If it's blue, that's that's perfectly. That's what you want. If the body was blue, then we selected the tube top first and the body second. And we need to go back and undo that. So the tube top should be blue. The blue is showing us that this is ready to be weight mapped. It's ready to move with the weight of the, the sim. We are going to come over here. We're paying attention to this section over here. And we're going to just click this button that says transfer weights. And then you'll see all these buttons come alive all of a sudden. I'm going to show you what we just did. So we're going to go over to this triangle again. And you're going to see this whole option of things. We're going to see, you know, pinky thumb. We're going to see forearm. If you were to click starting here, right, left click here and just hold down, making sure that your mouse is still in this section, hold down your, your um, directional key and just press down. Okay. Just press the down key. You're going to start to see, take, take a look at the tube top. You're going to start to see pieces of the tube top come to life like in terms of like it's going to be colorized we're not there yet but see very edge of the tube top and i'm just clicking down and it's going to show you all the pieces so this is the spine this is spine one this is the clavicle this is the shoulder twist this is the neck it's not going to show things that don't correspond. So it's not going to show elbow because it's not supposed to. Now, if I still had the arm here, it would probably show like arm twist. It's not supposed to show things like that. You want it to just be programmed to the body, which is why I deleted the arms. So this is spine zero. 
pelvis is not really supposed to show and i think we're done with this because uh it's just the top it's just a little tube top but we have it programmed now to move with the body and that is exactly what we want so of course we come file save as and we're saving it as version eight sorry okay so we can go back to object mode and <laughs> we can delete this body, this armless body. So this is the base top with the arms again. And we have our tube top that is programmed to not only change with the Sims size, but to also move with their body. Okay, we are almost there. There's one more step and it's just to delete the body that's in here just so that up here, if you look, you'll see some stats, okay? It's telling you that this is version 2.70 of Blender. And it says that in the tube top, or rather in the whole of this, between the tube top and the body, there's 1,391 vertices, okay? Meaning the dots that comprise of it. So if you come here to edit these little dots, okay? It's telling you, if you go back to this, that there are... 18, well, 1,844 of these dots, okay, between the tube top and the body. And also the edges, it's uh, 4,895, 4, if I'm not mistaken, of, you know, the lines. We want to try to minimize that. So what we're going to do is delete the portion of the body that's underneath the tube top because we don't need that. So I'm just going to choose, let me see, I think the easiest way would be just to line it up like this and then just choose this and click the delete button. Just making sure that you didn't delete anything that needed to be seen in back because it's easy to do that. And just because I'm a little paranoid, I'll do this again and I'll select, yeah, let's select this. There, that way I know that nothing got deleted from the back either. Cause remember the back dips down a little bit. So we have all portions and we just got to delete a couple. So instead of 18, it's now 1794. Okay, so we're gonna go back to object mode. We're almost there. I'm gonna click save as, version nine, save. We need to go to this, the third button. This is the scene, <laughs> it says scene, scene. It's just, it's like these three little things. It shows the camera, it shows your object, it shows, you know, you just want to go to that. And down here, it should say Geome 0, 0, 0, 0. If it says 0, 0, 0, 1, change it to a 0. If it says none, 0, you know, you have to change it to Geome 0, 0, 0, 0. This is the thing that if you downloaded version, Blender's version on your own and not through Sims 4 Studio, you wouldn't be able to see. I don't think you'd be able to see this or the weight mapping, if I'm not mistaken. So that's why it's so important to go through Sims 4 Studio to download the version of Blender, okay? You won't be able to see this. So once you do that, you are then going to, I always save this version. I take off the nine, I take off child female, and I just have ruffle hem tube top because that tells me this is the version before you saved your final version, before you combine both the tube top and the body, okay? Because that's what we're going to do. Right now, it's still separated into two sections. Let me just close this out. Right now, it's still separated into two sections, okay? We're going to click A twice. It's going to select both of these, okay? And then we're going to come over here to this button and we're going to click Join. We now have one mesh, one full mesh, okay? So if you look up here, the vertices are now 3,185, faces 4,080, and that is our final total count, okay? So we now have our tube top programmed to the body, and it looks really, really nice. And we're now able to go to video number five, which is going to be recoloring this tube top in Photoshop. 
and also going into the game and testing it to be sure it moves properly with the body. So I know that this was a lot of information. You were probably like, I have no clue what she means. Go back, take it slow, take it easy, take as many breaks as necessary and really listen to what I'm saying. Really take a look at what I'm saying. Play with Blender, okay? Don't be afraid of it. Okay, that's the reason why I save so many different versions of my meshes because if I do something that I feel like, well, I don't really like this, I want to go back to maybe two steps ago and I want to, you can go back to two steps. Do what I'm doing. Do not save one version. I promise you, if you get cocky like that, you are going to be angry at yourself. I've been there. I've told myself, oh, I can make this in one little, trust me, okay? It's very easy for something that just a tube top took, what, nine, ten steps? You have to be sure you save each and every single one of those steps. I promise you, you will hate yourself if you don't. Okay, I'm going to make other meshes using Marvelous Designer and Blender. I'm going to make some that are a little bit more simple. I'm going to make some that are a little bit more intricate. This was just something that I felt was very simple, very basic. Don't be upset if you say, oh my God, if this is simple and basic, then how am I supposed to follow along with the more intricate? You will, okay? The more you see it done, the more that you will understand why I'm doing it and you'll remember the steps that come next. If you need to do what I did, I got no pad out and I wrote down the different steps, okay? So the first step was uh, bring it into, you know, Blender from, from Marvelous Designer. The second step was to close up any open sections. Oh, there is actually one step that I forgot. So I'm going to press Control Z. Now that I think about it, there is one step I forgot. Wow, I can't believe I forgot this. So we're going to click on the tube top and I need to open up my edit mode again. We're going to go to UV image editor. That that ruffle. We need to double side that ruffle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click shift and D and just be sure that you don't move your mouse and you click on the left mouse button. And we have a duplicate now. Okay. This is the top version. This is the bottom version. We are now going to go back to edit mode and we're going to delete, just so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to delete the body. So we're going to use B to create a box and then we're going to choose H. And then we're going to press control I over here and we're going to click delete because all we need is the ruffles, okay? What we're going to do with the ruffles now is click A and come down here to mesh come down here to normals and we're going to flip the normals, okay? The reason why we're doing this is, remember what I told you in, um, what is it, in Marvelous Designer where you need the white side to show? We need the white side to show on the outside and the inside. So we need for this to be facing this, okay? It needs to be white on the inside and the outside. Otherwise, when you look at, like if we're standing around the sim like this in the game, this was going to be invisible. We weren't going to see the ruffles at all. And it was going to look crazy, look kind of scary. So we needed an inside and an outside. We need them facing each other, kind of like two palms that are put together in prayer, okay? We need one side on each, okay? So once we do that, I'm just going to hide the body for right now. Let me just delete that extra rig. We're going to hide the body and we're going to click A twice to be sure we select everything and we're going to join it. Okay, that is important. That's something that if we took it into Sims 4 Studio, I would have been like, whoa, that ruffle is looking kind of weird. How come I can't see it from certain angles? And I would have remembered, oh yeah, see what I mean? No matter how long you've been doing this, you will always be like, oh yeah, I forgot I need to do this or that. So don't feel overwhelmed. I That's why I wanted to do this in real time with you to show you that even something as simple as a tube top, it can take a couple of different steps and there are things that you can easily forget and it's not a big deal. You go back, you fix it. I have saved so many versions of this tube top so far that I can go back and I can fix it. 
Okay, so don't be upset if there's something you forget. Take out your notepad, write everything down, and you will be able to follow along on the steps. You can also go to Sims 4 Studio. They have great tutorials there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring the body back. And I'm going to do what I did before, control. Actually, let me just save this as the version right before the final save. So I'm going to save that now that we have the ruffle together. I'm going to click A twice. And I'm going to go back to join and I'm going to save it as version 10. Okay, so I'm going to show you what it looks like on your sim. It's probably going to look a little wonky because we haven't colored it yet. So it's going to be like different tones. So this was the top that we were basing the background on. I'm going to go to this middle category. I'm going to import mesh. And I'm just going to click on details. View by details. Okay. So we know that we need the latest version. Okay. Any of these would, wouldn't show up if we put them on. But version 10 will show up. And it may take a little while just because it's a couple of vertices. It's only 3,867 as you can see. So that usually doesn't take too long. Um... Oh, actually, the reason why it's not showing up is, once again, see, geom 0000. That probably got kicked out when I chose um, the tube top instead of the body. You always have to be, if it doesn't show up on Sims 4 Studio, look over here. This is always the culprit if it doesn't show up. I'm not going to say always. 90% of the time, it's the culprit. So let's click save again. And now it's going to show up. Like I said, even if you've been doing this for a very long time, there's still things that you could easily forget. Once this wheel stops spinning, you should be able to see it here. If you don't, go and check this. This is always, ugh, this is always, it's usually the culprit. So we're going to wait for the wheel. See, we have our mesh. And it looks funny because we haven't, um, remember, this ruffle was between the arms. So that's why it's flesh toned. But once we recolor it in the next step, you're going to be like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. It's going to look really great. And that's where we're going to leave off for now. We're going to click save. And we're going to leave off here for now and pick up in video number five exactly at this point. Once again, if you have any questions, you can comment down below. You can send me a private message on YouTube. You can go to my site and you can contact me there or just contact me at symphonycc at aol.com. I will link everything down below. Thank you for watching. I apologize if this seems overwhelming. I promise you that if you take your time and you look through all the resources that I've directed you to, just look over the video again if you need to. You will finally start to understand. And I will be doing other videos that show you how to go through everything from beginning to middle to end yet again with a new mesh. Okay, thank you for watching and I'll see you in video number five.